smashed! You what? Let's go! Yes. Brad Lesnar on the beast. On the beast. What the East hell? The Whole new swag with a price on the tag coming live from the west to the east. Coastal. Better recognize on the mouthpiece. Russia. See the power level got an increase. I get no bitches. Content on a daily. daily. Feeling like Russia unleashed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, baby mamas, baby daddies, everybody in between, it is your purveyor of mischief, Gresh, welcoming you back to the Gresh Unleashed podcast, and today, Deontay DDJ will be joining the Unleashed table, and he will be divulging into all it takes to be a content creator on his in, on YouTube, WWE games, and all that good stuff, and everything in between. We have a good laugh. He lists his favorite black wrestlers, as well as I give him a short list of content creators that he give his honest opinions about. So without further delay, joining me now, obviously, is the guy who is, I guess I would say simply better than the rest, but that is a whole nother gimmick infringement that I don't even want to be a part of. So uh, we're just going to, we're going to call him my good buddy, Deontay DDJ. What's good with you, brother? What's up, man? I mean, I am technically simply better than the rest. I I will prove it one day to Aaron. But anyway, what's up, man? (laughs) Hey man, welcome to the table, man. Uh, is first of all, let's how are you feeling? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. A little tired because I've been working like crazy recently, but yeah, you know, part of the process. Oh yeah, you're tired because you you've been doing your your thing over on YouTube, man. Like you you it's, <laughs> you one of them fast growing content creators where I be, I believe you need to at least have a hundred thousand by by the end of the year. But it's it's, it's up to the people to wake up. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. <laughs> All right, so um, I checked out your um interview with a uh, Muscle Man Malcolm, a, a fellow Vibe member uh, of of yours, of mm-hmm. you guys. Um, you watch NXT UK, and that's what piqued my oh. interest. You watch NXT UK. Is this how we're gonna start? Yeah, because <laughs> uh, as someone who does Go not on. watch that, sh- as someone who does not watch that show, uh, who's on the roster you think you you would recommend to watch? Because I want to watch NXT UK, but I just don't want to watch that much wrestling because I I watch WWE, AEW, Impact uh, from time to time, MLW. It's so much going on. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I, I understand that. I don't like watching that much wrestling either. Like, I, I don't understand watch NJPW strong and like that whole thing. I there's too much there, but um, I'll keep it with the highlights for New Japan on like Twitter and shit. Um, by the way, can we swear on your channel? That's cool, right? You can swear. I'm uncensored, yeah. brother. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Just check it. I, I don't know if we were doing like family friendly interview, but um, yeah. Uh, no. Basically, NXT UK. Okay, who should you watch? Ilya Dragunov. He's phenomenal. Okay. I'm sure you've seen him before. Um, Trent and Tyler, one of the best tag teams of all time. Um, who else should you watch? Uh, JD McDonough. For as much as I don't agree with everything that Jordan Devlin's done, he's Moving over to NXT 2.0, he did um, under a new gimmick and everything, calling himself the Ace, which was <laughs> a bit it rips off a little bit, but stuff so from what's his name Tanahashi. Mm. Um, and so yeah, uh, who else should you watch? Just Trent and Tyler. Trent and Tyler are like the pinnacle of everything. I've, I've seen some highlights feuding now because I saw the highlights yeah. where Trent. Turned on, I mean, not Trent Tyler. It was it Trent? Yeah, Trent Tyler turned on Tyler. Trent turned on Tyler, yeah. And I'm like, oh, we're getting a Champa Gargano feud. <laughs> it's gonna be but, better than Champa Gargano, but better, yeah, because the ending. We not we don't talk about the ending. Uh, that ending match that they had that was abysmal. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> I, when I was back to that to the interview you had with Muscle Man Malcolm, I I kind of caught. Did, were, did you first start watching wrestling in two thousand and eleven? Like as um, far as like on your own, I know you probably watched it as a kid, but like on your own. I'll, I'll briefly retell the story because I honestly I was full of anxiety for that interview and I just didn't tell it well. So to start off in like two thousand seven, um, I discovered. But the game SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, the greatest hey. wrestling game of all time. Um, I would say it's 2011, but that, that's a whole different. Uh, hey, I actually like it. Um, too. Yeah, 
Um, so back then with my cousin who was super into wrestling, way more into wrestling than I was, he was trying to get me into it and I really wasn't understanding the real life product of it all. But the video game, I was like, oh, super fun to play. And so I'm playing the video game like uh, that couple year span, but I wasn't watching the actual TV. Like I'd see highlight, it wasn't really like a thing I cared about that much. I just found it well, low-key kind of cringe and kind of corny. I don't see the appeal here, which is very ironic considering I'm now here. Um, so yeah, I didn't really see the but SmackDown vs Raw 2007 goated game, one of the and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna play this, um, and so I did. As passed by, I'm not really watching it, and then randomly, the channel we have uh, here in the UK called Sky Sports, I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, they had like Undertaker vs Kane Hell in a Cell highlights from the 20, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like I'll watch this. I've got nothing else to watch. I'll check it out, and I enjoyed it. And then a couple like weeks after that, I saw on YouTube, which was just getting going at the time, and that's around the time I was starting my channel. But I saw John Cena roasting Vicky Guerrero uh, with Dolph Ziggler, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of funny." And so it's a very random way to get into wrestling, honestly. But it was like a ten-minute segment of them fat shaming Vicky Guerrero, which in this day and age has not aged very well. But that's hilarious to my ten-year-old the Michelle self and so I was like oh this is funny I was really good like I, I can kind of see myself getting into this and then uh maybe after the Christmas episode of Raw that year uh they played a little vignette for something called the Royal Rumble and I was like oh okay this this seems good like they're all saying either one and I'm like okay let me let me check this out let me try and persuade my mom to um or order it on pay-per-view it was like 60 pounds at the time or whatever but I was like okay I really want this like let's get it um, I watched the Royal Rumble, was rooting for Santino to win at the end. He didn't win. It was Del Rio, unfortunately. Um, and then, uh, yeah, after that, the rest is kind of history after that. Like, I slowly started getting more into it around that time, or getting more into it around that time. And then I started watching the weekly shows, started watching SmackDown, started watching WWE superstars with freaking Tyson Kidd and Trent Barretta and, like, Justin Gabriel and all those kinds of guys. Um was watching NXT even as well. Like I was getting super into it. Then we got into the summer of punk and Edge retired. And I was super sad because he was like one of my favorites in that time. And I was like uh, buying all the DVDs and I was like, oh, this Edge guy's sick. And then just had him, he had retired. And you know, we, we know what happened with him. Um, and so, yeah, then I just started watching more of it, started slowly getting more into the games and yeah, like I said, rest is history. Here we are. I'm I'm getting enamored with your story, but it's funny that you <laughs> mentioned 2011 because that was, ironically, the first pay-per-view I ordered was WrestleMania 27. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and so, it was like... Similar times. Yeah, so, no, fun, th fun thing is I was watching wrestling in the 90s, or in the late 90s because I was four. Mm. Uh, with my sister okay. and my and my and my um my cousin slash brother because he was adopted into the family, um mm -hmm. and my mom my mom caught me and she was like don't don't you watch that shit no more because it, it's it, at the time <laughs> it was still the attitude era so you know all they saw all you saw was tits ass and swearing and 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 blood <laughs> so my mom was like no so fast forward to two thousand and six the end of two thousand and six early two thousand seven that's when I really started getting back into it and I'm like. Okay, I can do this. And then obviously 2011, that it's like 2009 to 2011 is when I blacked out. Like if if mm. WWE on YouTube doesn't upload a like a full match type deal, I'll be like, oh, I don't remember nothing that happened. I'll be like, oh shit, that did happen. Like you saw you saw yeah. at the Royal Rumble this year, they did, they did a few references to uh stuff that was in the past, and you was like, oh shit, that like no, not not WWE, um AEW with uh Claudio and Jake Hager. I was like, yeah. oh shit, they, they were a, a tag team at one point. We, we the people. people. The people. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. And that was a part of the time where I'd just be blacking shit out because I'm like, it'd be mm. so much going on and then some of the stuff sucks. So I'd be like, maybe if I forget that, I will... Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'll, I'll be happy. Are you telling me Aksana and uh, Antonio Cesaro United States Championship run wasn't fire? Is that what you're telling me right now? Really? That was a thing. That was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I mean. That era of WWE, like, it was when I was getting into it, so there was so much weird stuff happening and stuff that arguably, like, hardcore fans hate. But at the same time, I was getting into it and I was a kid, so I was like, oh, this is great.
But anyway, sorry, no, I cut you off. That's the fun, <laughs> no, that's the funny thing about it is it's like around that time that when I look back at stuff it, and anything that you hate online, you be like, bro, come on now. You you know you really like it. You're like, come on. Yeah. It's it's wrestling. You, you you're not supposed to take it. Anybody who take wrestling serious, I I I think you are a fry short of a happy man. A loser. Because it's oh. yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> basically. In American terms, a fry short of happy man, that means you're stupid. Cause it's like, bro, yeah. it's it's wrestling. You're, you're not really you're not supposed to take it serious. Like if you take it serious, then you, you and in the words of Seahawk on Twitter, you get no bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but WrestleMania 27, what was your favorite match on there? Uh, Edge versus Del Rio, because like I said, uh, Edge is my favorite all time, biggest Edge fan back then, and it was his last match, it turns out. And so um, I, I think I mentioned it in the Markham interview as well, but like that was, um, obviously I was like 11 at the time, uh, and I wasn't allowed to like stay for full pay-per-views because my body just couldn't hack, uh, handle that 4 a.m. schedule like a degenerate. Um, <laughs> and so I ended up, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's quite into the sleep schedule part of being a UK wrestling fan in a second. But um, like I was saying, yeah, I had a few matches of uh, WrestleMania 27 to watch live, and it was great. And what I didn't know was going to be his final match, but watching that, and it was just, yeah, yeah it, Edge is the best. He is. The now, you mentioned Edge. We're going to fast forward it to current times. Were you a fan of his heel turn with the Judgment Day? Uh, ah, uh, kind of. I feel like they just barely scratched the surface could do with that, and I feel like it was a little premature to make like the I don't even know what they call the disciples. Like I guess that's more House of Black, but like the disciples or like the the lower people in Judgment Day below him, they didn't really build them up as much. Like, I know Damien Priest kind of speaks for himself at this point. Like, he had the US title stuff. Ray Rivala, like, I get it. But I feel like they should have built them up a lot. Then maybe Ed, you know, gets turned on. I feel like it was all way too fast between, oh, one minute he's in a feud with AJ Styles, then he's under some blue lighting, and then he's blue Edge, and then he's evil, and then he tries to kill us, and then uh, now he's got these guys, and, like, I... I they pro probably could have done a better uh, job of like flip, but I, I have a job for what it was. You know, I feel like he did the best he could. Also, the promos were kind of corny at times. <laughs> I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw what um, I be quote to you, uh, people with. Uh, they be they they'll compare Edge's um, heel promo to Christian Cage's recent heel turn. Like, oh, they yeah. have all that dialogue, but then Christian said, "Your daddy's dead." <laughs> LOL. Yeah, or I saved that to my he phone. have all that dialogue, and then Luchasaurus says, Raw, and now he's healed. So <laughs> <laughs> they look, like, they yeah. will say, You doing all this, you doing all this dialogue, and then I'm gonna be honest with you, anytime Edge did talk, I did black out because I'm like, Come on, bro, you're you're talking for 20 minutes, like of nothing you're not what's the point <laughs> yeah yeah see this is this is what i mean like with the edge promos like i i, I feel like he did the best he could with it and by the same time a lot of the promos were just like you people stink like it was very much when he turned heel and he had the gas mask and it was like oh yeah you people stink you people suck this town insert town here this town's bad to get a little heel reaction it wasn't really like judgment day it was more just like heel faction generic catchphrases whereas christian's just a savage and it's great he's just it like, was yeah, wwe 2k it was wwe 2k uh season mode or my rise basically yeah. with the with the exactly with, with seth rollins and his uh remember i think if you play that part where he, he turns on his his disciple you join the the what is it the, the greater good or whatever that's basically yeah, what it is like with that. the with the dialogue where he was just it's like bro what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> what the f like I played that part. I'm like, what are you talking about right now? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it, every and that might be because of the scripting, or he's trying to distance himself from the rated R superstar. But it, it yeah. felt to the point where it was like, bro, you're just you're just saying words at this point. You're not you're 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 not going because you're in the acting you're not going you're not going from plot a to plot z you're going from plot a plot a plus b plus, plus c plus d then you're going to z it's like bro what are you talking about 
And by the time you get the Z, yeah. I'm already tuned out. So it's like you're this is it's like a I don't know if you ever heard of this 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 uh producer in from America. He's kind of like Tyler Perry with uh his dialogue sometimes where it's all over the place until he gets to the point. You Google Tyler Perry and you'll and his films and watch his films, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure I know the name. I yeah, off the top of my head, I yeah. I can't think, but I I know the name. Yeah, I yeah, that's it was what I'm very much just it, like it, all sorry, over. The <laughs> it was all over. The yeah, place. it was. It could have been done much but, better, but uh, oh, they, we saw the the vignettes during Money in the Bank as well, didn't we? I think that yep. might be Stevenson, maybe, but. We'll, we'll see I'm what the next edge. chapter is for Edge. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I was one of the people who kind of flipped out. It was like, The Fiend? <laughs> like, is it The Fiend? Me too. <laughs> oh, then I was like, when I looked at it again, and then people started breaking it, I'm like, yeah, that's Edge. <laughs> yeah. And then Joe Mashups, he put a, a, a tweet of Edge's original uh, Titan Tron from early 90s, 2000s, and it was basically the same thing but more updated i'm like yeah it's edge he's going back to his yeah. roots hopefully he come back to uh <laughs> yeah my girl i'm sorry I, I, he need to come back to metal language yeah but oh, um the uh, get... the 19 like 98 theme he had where it was it was like you think you know me like with the woman saying it that was a great thing you think I you know me yeah hey no 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 knowing them they'll probably have Def Def Rebel remix it and sounds like shit. Oh, it's Def Rebel. <laughs> that's that's a whole conversation. <laughs> might as might as well. What is your favorite current thing? Might as well talk about Def Rebel. What Ooh. is your favorite current Ooh. thing? In in thing or WWE? We're gonna we're gonna first WWE then all of wrestling. Um, I feel like I almost need to look through my Spotify right now. Do you want to look through my Spotify? I I just see. If... Uh, what what theme? There's got to be a theme I listen to a lot. But you know what it isn't actually an underrated theme? Dominic Dijakovic. His uh NXT theme is really good. Um, do they? Is it still up? What else? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know they've been. I know they've been purging. I know they've been purging uh you themes if you're not with the company anymore. So that's why I was like, is it still up? So oh no, because he's still T Bar, isn't he? So I guess it still yeah. still counts, right? Right, yeah, we're gonna look to my uh, Spotify here, and I'm gonna try and find out what the hell I listen to. Cause I, I won't lie, I've got a few of these songs in my gym playlist just for like motivation and shit. So let's see. Okay, Spotify is really not gonna load. Okay, there we go. Let's find out. <laughs> but yeah, I, while while I'm doing this, what about you? What was your favorite uh, WWE theme right now? Well, current well currently, ooh, it's Seth Rollins. Oh yeah, the, the 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 chorus. But then what, it's like I took I kind of black out the transition into the, dun, 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 the all that noise. But I just kind of yeah. remember the choir part. Anything other yeah, than that? That's cool. why it's 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 a it's a it's the meme that he's everybody's favorite church cho choir director. Oh, I just noticed. Yeah, they are blacking out the themes for people who aren't with it. The, what the? They have got rid of Johnny Gargano's theme. Yeah, so you can't what? hear Rebel Heart anymore. No, that was that was my favorite one. That I've listened to that an unhealthy amount of times. That is that's so uh the Unfortunately, it's still on YouTube. It's still on uh, that might be gone too. That's yeah, that's that's gone. I'm just looking at the great out ones now. Keith Lee, he had a great theme. Uh oh, Cody Rhodes. There we go. Kingdom. 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 Great. Hey man. Yeah. Th I, I that's on my playlist. Uh <laughs> but now that now, so we can agree that Seth Rollins is basically one of the best. I mean, you can put Roman Reigns up there, but I mean, cheap plug. If you hear the the highlight reel version, it, it sounds a lot better. That's uh, my Whoa, boy highlight. Uh, he 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 rapped over it just 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 for shits and giggles, and it actually came out of uh, Romans. Oh okay, yeah. Because because it was around the time where it first came out, we was like, man, this this is missing something. We was like, we need some vocals, and he's like, yeah, yeah let me let me do something. But now that you've heard it so many times, it's like it's fine either way. But yeah, Seth Rollins is number one, Roman, and then everybody else is just everybody else's. Yeah, um, you know what is another great theme actually. While we're on the conversation of theme songs, Seven Nation Army, Pat McAfee's theme at WrestleMania. That was hey. good as well. Classic. I hope you come out I of that wanted... at SummerSlam. 
he should, but also he stole it from my boy Trent Seven. While we're, while we're talking about NXT UK earlier, uh, everyone's like, oh yeah, Pat McAfee seems so great. Like, oh, he, he bought this to WWE. No, Trent had it first. He had it in the UK tournament back in 2017. And I'm he sick did. and tired of people not remembering this. He, he did. started. Like it's legit. The the uh, what's it called? Like the the chorus. Like when people are singing along to the song, it's like, "Oh, Trent Seven Army." Like there's no Pat McAfee there. Oh, but... you just unlocked the literally. You just unlocked yeah. my Pandora's box because I remember being excited about that tournament because that was my first. That un, fun fact. That was my first time being exposed to UK wrestling. Was that UK really? tournament? Was that UK tournament? Hmm. Yeah, it's great. Oh, speaking of, sorry, now that we're talking about the UK and remembering all my favorite UK wrestlers, B Priestley or Blair Davenport, she just returned to NXT UK. She's great as well. She's great. She just came back from injury. She was um, in AEW, wasn't she? She was. She was the first big uh, jump from AEW to WWE, not Cody Rhodes. But um, anyway, uh, I won't stop my NXT UK propaganda. I'm going full in with it now. Mustache Mountain Steam, Trent Seven Steam, great as well. Uh, Pete Dunn's old team, fantastic. Um, he don't even have a here. more. He has Seamus's name. Yeah. <laughs> it, it breaks my heart. Butch on these hoes. <laughs> Butch laddie. Um, yeah, I think that's oh Jericho's theme. Obviously, I'll stop the the conversation now about theme songs. I'm just very interested in this playlist now. Now but, that um, we moved on from WWE, what about AEW? Because you know they they have was Ruckus. <laughs> that dude is pushing out banger after banger after banger. Like yeah, I can tell you right now, my first, my top one is I am the Key Fleet thing. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. that's on my gym I, playlist. That's on my like soon as when I'm when I'm about to when I'm about to tap out off the uh, what you call it off of bur- burpees, trying to do some mm-hmm. burpees to, to to finish it. I'm like I can't do it. As soon as that come on, I'm like all right, I got to do it. I'm out of <laughs> like you just start working out. I'm like, all right, yeah, let me go. I'll feel. I'll I probably. Feel I'll probably. I regret it later because when that theme, when the beat drops, you kind of go overboard because it's so. Yeah. It pumps you up, but then I'm like, all right, all right, I'm I'm good on that. All right. Another one, even um, though Ruckus, even though Ruckus didn't um, record it, big pressure, Swerve's thing. Mm, I'm sorry. Yeah. But, this. The the only problem I have with Swerve's theme though is that it takes a little too long to get into it. Like when he made his debut at what Revolution, it was like like there, there was a big pop because he was like Swerve Strickland making his AW debut, and it was just kind of quiet and there was nothing. And then it hit. I think it should more just go into the chorus. If I'm being picky about <clears throat> I it, I think what they need to do, and I've said that a, a lot, a lot of AEW themes, they need to have an intro version and an exit version. <clears throat> yeah. They need to have it to where when Swerve wins, they don't need to replay the intro version. They need to go top, bro, catch, like go straight to the beat. Because when yeah. because when he celebrates, I'm like, bro, this is quiet. <laughs> it's, yeah, even when it's, he even when he celebrates, it sounds quiet. I'm like, and then as soon as it beat, I'm like, oh, they don't moved on. I don't even hear the the beat. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like they they need to do it with Swerve. They when uh, Shinsuke first got to NXT, uh, when he first beat Sami Zayn, they. They had they did that thing where it was the long intro at the start and then they mastered it and it was like the and it was into the chorus um, and they do it with the Young Bucks theme as well. Obviously they're like EVPs so they're gonna get a little bit better treatment, but yeah. um, even still, like with Ricky Stark's theme, it should just hit um, in there. Like like you said with Swerves, it should just you know get into it. But um, who, who do you, who's on favorite, your list? Who's on your list? Yeah, I was just gonna say. There is a lot on there. Like, almost every AEW theme I enjoy. So, first of all, we've got FTR's theme. A banger. Grew on me a lot in the last year. Um, much better than anything they've had before. Col- uh, Coliseum Clash. Samoa Joe's theme. A banger. Ricky Starks. The Young Bucks. Adam Cole. Arguably the best AEW theme there is. Just Boom. an uh, absolute classic. Since we first heard it. Um, Ghost Town Triumph. Hangman Adam Page. Wild Thing. A banger every time you hear it. Hook's theme. Uh, the Chairman's Intent. Um, Court of Personality, the um, Ethan Page's theme, underrated MJF's theme has its moments. Cold World, Eddie Kingston, uh, Britt Baker's theme, uh, John Moxley's old theme, Sting's theme, Darby Allen. There's yeah, uh, Kenny Omega. There's like a pack. plethora. There's so many Judas as well. Um, what else we got in here? Tarzan Boy, Ruby Soho. I could go on. Ju- Judas, oh boy. Um... Do you not like that? You know, I liked it at first, but it's like 
I think the sing along kind of killed it for me when they when the crowd does it because the crowd they no I think no fun fact I think when the pandemic hit <clears throat> and when every when you know how they focused like they literally focused on the crowd mm. uh, singing it I was like this doesn't feel the same I hate it now and I think yeah. I, I think I never recovered from it that's probably what it is <laughs> you know what I almost didn't recover from I don't remember what AEW uh, event it was but the event where he had his boy from Fozzie doing like the really loud uh, whatever the hell it was just the noise it that almost noise. killed him for me it was yeah it was that awful. But. That ki- that killed it, and then remember when um, Cody's theme played live? Until oh, he returned, yeah. I hated it. Until he returned to WWE, then I liked it again. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. it is. I think I think the band is a great band, but they just suck at live. <laughs> yeah, these the live performances can be very hit or miss. But um, yeah, Sammy Guevara, the Elite theme, I do like just because it's the theme song of BT, and I love BT. Cero uh, Miedo by Lucha Bros. Oh, Brian Danielson's theme. Isn't that just a banger as well? Oh, yeah. um, Do you like the the instrumental version or the one with the lyrics? I, I've both. seen I've seen mixed reviews on the the lyric version, where the Born for Greatness version, as opposed to it's, the instrumental. It's it's <clears throat> weird because ever since he turned heel, the lyrics seem to match it more, and I don't know how to describe it, but like. I, it feels like they match him more now. I don't know how to describe it, but I, I do like both versions. They are very good. And also only just recently realized that like the little chant in between the theme song where it's like like you can hear the crowd. Is somebody gonna get your fucking Yeah, you're gonna get your you're gonna get your head fucking kicked in, basically. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people didn't catch it. I was like, that's literally it. <laughs> no, I thought it was something else for so long, but um I guess not. Um <laughs> what else is that? Oh, Jamie Hayes theme. You know everything about her is just phenomenal. Oh yeah, Keith I, Lee. I, I, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. we, we we could talk about Jamie Harris. We're want. part. I mean, we're part of. We're, we're on that train now. I'm on that train now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, she's she's soon to be TBS champion. It's only a matter of time before she destroys your girl Jade Cargill. But um, you know, <laughs> 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 that's gonna be a match. I hope you understand it. It's gonna that be is gonna be a point. part where me and Deontay are gonna be on the opposing sides of the Twitter <laughs> Twitter machine because we were like, no. Jay, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be phenomenal. It's going to be entertaining tw- Twitter television. But before we get to our Twitter game, let's mm-hmm. get on your, your let's get on your content right quick. Um, what is your favorite series that you produce on your on your channel? Like, because I, I, so far, for those of you who don't know, he has WW2K, My Rise content on my career, my career multiverse, as well as my G or GMO. Is it my GMO? Yeah. GMO? Uh, GMO, yeah. GMO, I believe he had one for Raw. He now has one for AEW as well. And he actually bringing that back for season two or three? Three. 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 Yeah. I watched all of it. That's what I'm trying. It's so much It's so much content this man produced. It is hilarious. <laughs> but what is your favorite series that you personally like to work on? Um, It's got to be between the GMO stuff and the Micro Universe just because like the micro universe is very much obviously inspired by the marvel universe so it's so fun just like like planning out all the different stories and having my own timeline to work with and my own characters and like it's like having my own like thing just my own playground just to play with and it's very good for content because there's all this possibility for crossover and like um uh, not to ruin the end of this series which the finale is dropping next week but i'm about to go into the multiverse finally and so that's going to open up a door of possibilities, a forbidden door of possibilities, because now I can, you know, I can go back to other series that I've done in other universes and I can have like these superstars interact with these. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to do that. And I'm also going to get a lot of YouTubers involved in that one. Hopefully you include this. Well, I haven't asked you yet, but, you know, if you want to be a part of the multiverse, yeah. Hey, you know, the prodigy doesn't mind coming out of retirement. That was literally yeah. my, my character's nickname or like nickname, but then it was the prodigy Carmelo Young, but then mm. Carmelo Hayes became a thing. I said, let me retire Carmelo because <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to confuse people, or I don't want to. He's too great to, for me to compare. But I'm like, okay, so I'll just be myself. And mm. I was like, the prodigy Gresh or the prospect Gresh. Like started, yeah. I started tears. I was like, okay, since I'm a rookie, <laughs> I'm the prospect. But then when I become better i'll be the prodigy but yeah you know i, I tell you all the time if, I, if y'all want to work with me i i got you i like I, yeah. I don't mind i don't I'm, mind stepping behind the camera or stepping in front of the editing booth and do yeah. my thing <clears throat> i think the idea with the multiverse that i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna get 
because obviously it's my series and selfishly I'm not going to give everyone else all the screen time but I do want to feature some other people as well and be like okay this episode Gresh is here making a cameo from a different universe let's get him to cut a promo and like a tag team match or something we'll get yeah. uh, Steve OG's bum ass and we'll get his <laughs> silver here this we'll be get... more hit is <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Steve in a second but um, yeah we'll get Steven Silver in here we'll get like this guy's creator we'll get Phoenix we'll get like all these people and really just make an expansive universe um and so yeah that should be exciting but going back to like my favorite stuff to make the gm mode also very fun just because i like the aw gm mode the first time was such a special thing for me like it just the first episode blew up and it was like okay i put a lot of effort into this thing and there's nothing nicer than when you're a content creator you put effort into something and it gets a lot of love like instantly so that was great um and yeah, even though I didn't end up finishing season two of the AW Gem mode, but that was purely because 2K19 at that point was like such a washed game and we had been on it for so long. I was just like, let me wait for 2K22 and then I'll do my thing again. But yeah, uh, AW Gem mode, micro universe, those are definitely the two two top ones. And the Reddit videos, because, you know, oh, yeah. Reddit titles always I tr- work. I've, I've tried to get into the Reddit videos. I'm actually going to step back into it, but I try not to get in everybody's mm. territory because I'm like... <laughs> Uh, let me not get into the WWE game subreddit because that's Deontay's thing. But then at the same time, I'm like, I don't care. Let me just do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, I, I like like I said before when I think you tweeted um that you were gonna do something. Like I don't mind. Like I'd be happy to see more people on there as well. Um, yeah, so I, it, I think it, I'd like I'd like to see that. And and it's, and it's stuff like that. But um, speaking of uh, Stevo, and I, I we didn't forget about him. <laughs> um. His feed me more head ass, like, oh my god. This uh, guy for real told me he was a Ryback mark. I could not believe the scenes. I, I, no, I, no. I oh I want I'm like, bro, I almost I almost blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you you are what? <laughs> you are I what just now? know he used to run around his Australian house in the upside down being like, feed me more. God, feed we, we should actually start a podcast just slandering Steve. I just yeah, for the whole yeah. hour. The, just just a full hour of just slandering this man like like, like. <laughs> oh and you know what is crazy actually speaking of ryback he shaved his head to be like ryback that's the only reason he did it oh yeah he did shave his head i'm like bro you bum <laughs> <laughs> you, you forget baron corbin you bum ass steve-o <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all man. jokes all jokes all jokes we're yeah not picking, we're we not bullying this man we love this man come on man. uh uh, before we get to our speed round Q and A, w- one more thing. Mm-hmm. Last, we're we, we going. We're going. We're not going to forget the queen that you that you love. You love Jamie Hader, but what are your thoughts on your girl Liv? Oh, look at that beautiful <laughs> scene right there. Oh, just gr- we 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 fought for this moment. We really did. Like me, me and uh, my girl Liv, we we put in many hours of of hard work just uh in the gym in the ring you know doing rolls and uh doing suplexes and it's it's just great that you know i've had many conversations with her uh she's out of the you're moment, but you're she's... from the uk you're sounding french with this we <laughs> well, <laughs> what? excuse me um yeah no so anyway as i was saying before i was so rudely interrupted uh liv morgan you know she's the greatest <laughs> women's wrestler um well not the greatest of all time she's getting there though the greatest women's wrestler of all time is actually behind me there becky lynch that's a whole different discussion but uh you know go through this thing with becky back in the day where people were sleeping on her we manifested it we got her to be champion main event at wrestlemania and that <laughs> <laughs> you you're at hand with these graphics you got these on hand jesus christ any wrestler i say there's just a picture um <laughs> Yeah, no, Liv Morgan, I'm super happy for her, all jokes aside, she earned this, she deserves it, and uh, hopefully, well, I was, see, here's the thing, I was going to say hopefully she has a long and prosperous reign as women's champion, but then I remember, she won the SmackDown Women's title, and you know who else is on SmackDown? Charlotte Flair. Holy shit. It's over. Oh, yeah. damn. By, uh, by SummerSlam, it's, yeah. I'll enjoy it for while it lasts, though. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> <sighs> Sorry to bring it, the mood down. <laughs> No, funny thing is, when Ronda won the title, someone said, Y'all gonna miss Charlotte. And then the more she was, the longer she was champion, I ironically missed Charlotte. Yeah. In a way. Thank you, though. 
Not really. Not really. You really missed the whole. Did you? I'm the queen. Woo! I'm yeah. so. Ugh. Yeah. I fibbed. I lied. I didn't miss you. Stay away. Go away. Um. Yeah. But yeah. AEW. AEW. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather see her over there. Because she would actually bring up that women's division. With WWE, she only brings it down, in my opinion. This is true because <sighs> that AEW women's division. Boy. They just. It's, it's good in sports. The talent is but... there. Yeah. It's just the booking that makes you frustrated. And when you call it out, you get called a WWE shield. And I'm like, if I'm on their payroll, I'm going to take it. <laughs> but but I'm still going to be honest. Yeah. No, the thing with AEW is, like, they do have a very, very talented women's division, like, across the board through AEW Dynamite to Rampage to even Dark. Um, which I once got clowned on for watching, but I don't care. Dark's, you know, I Dark Dark. I like seeing people who are coming up. Um, and so, yeah, like I was saying, like, they've got Ruby Soho. They fumbled her to put Britt Baker over. They've got Britt Baker, who is genuinely very good if they book her correctly. Thunder Rosa. And, and really the, the point, the error they're making is that Jamie Hayer has not become women's champion yet. That's really where we, we need to, you know, the edit er- this whole thing. That and the fact that it's like, when it's 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 like they don't they need to give everybody the same time that they give Brit. Yeah, it's like Brit is great, but we need you, we need you to treat Thunder Rosa the same mm. that you tra- that mm, you te- that you treated her when she was champion. We need you to treat uh, Chris Statlander like you would treat a Brit Baker because she it like she went through a whole gimmick change more than a woman, and I'm like put the, put a title on incredible. this woman. Put she a title incredible. on this woman, and I saw her yeah. live, wrestle live on Dynamite when I was when they was here, and um in, here in Atlanta, and I'm like, why isn't this woman getting more? That's all I can say. The entire match, I'm like, she her match yeah. was Ruby Soho. I was like, yo, this is brilliant. Like, what is what is what are you doing, Tony? What like <clears throat> what is going on? Even even down Tony to Storm, like yeah, Tony Storm as well. Yeah, Queen of the Cheeks. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had to say. I yeah I don't think before I speak but anyway uh, like I was saying back to the serious discussion here when it comes to women's wrestling in AEW they have all the potential but they they clearly no matter how much Tony Khan wants to say that he treats them equally he doesn't um he doesn't give them the same amount of time as the men there's always like one women's match and then like six men's matches it should be a bit more balanced because there is a lot more talent there there should definitely be more B stories in the women's division to build them up to that uh, women's title scene. Mm-hmm. Jade Cargill is one of the standouts. I will say I do enjoy what they're doing with her. Like she is kind of firming the booking, but also that whole thirty and zero thing and having her thirty and zero thing be against Marina Shafir was like really like you've got so much other options. I feel so bad for 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 Marina when the crowd yeah. literally did nothing. I'm like they nothing. are quiet. The crickets were quiet. I'm like this yeah. is and and it's like I don't bash people because. It's like I'm not in their position, but come on, you gotta yeah. call a spade a spade. Like that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> when when you've got that much talent and you're signing all like, oh, Ruby Soho is all elite, Tony Storm's all elite, Chris Statland has been grinding since day one, and you give it to Marina Shafir as like the big it just doesn't make any sense, like to anyone. Um and also another thing that I hate about women's wrestling in AEW, and it's a very small thing, but the way the commentators act in a men's match compared to a women's match is so different. Like in a women's match, they're a lot more uh, sort of jovial and a lot more like joking. And even when there's a finish, they're kind of like, oh, that was a move. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, one, two, three. Okay, Tony picks up the win. And then in a men's match, they're like, oh, and it's like a big thing. And it's, oh, yeah. you know, it, the whole presentation from to top be, to bottom is, is yeah. completely different. If you treat something to be important, then people will see it as important. If you don't treat it as important, then people are never going to take it seriously. It's just the way it is. And you just took the words right out of my mouth because it's like <laughs> I and and I was I noticed that because it was like when Jr. is up, Jr. Oh my God, it's it's become a running joke. If you if you listen to Dead, Deadlock, it's literally a running joke about Jr.'s commentary with women. And I'm like, bro, come on now, it, it, yeah, it, y'all need to eat either. Now I give credit where it's due. Excalibur tries to make it important, but you, you mm. instantly have Jr. say a sly comic, and then it's like, okay, 
now we don't care it again. Because he'll say yeah. something, he'll try to hype a move up, but then JR said, Are you sure Excalibur? Are you sure? I'm like, Are you sure just, Excalibur? My God, you, I, I don't You just buy JR's it. barbecue sauce right now at JR's barbecue. Uh, yeah. you, you just killed it. Like I remember at one point where he was <laughs> he was he was like trying to talk about Chris Stadler, Chris Statlander losing weight and stuff. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. What? What? <laughs> that, that's you remember in the early, early AEW days when they had like Riho and Nyla Rose going at it. I think that was that was the feud at the beginning, right? Yeah. And the first of all, he'd be very like obviously we know Nyla's situation, but JR was like an extra level of uncomfortable uh when talking about her and like being in those matches. And then he'd just be really awkward about it. And then with Riho, he'd always be like, uh, like constantly, like you said, obsessed with her weight, being like, oh, she only weighs 90 pounds, Excalibur. Okay, but she's okay. incredibly talented. It doesn't matter. Like, she's the underdog, my guy. Come on yeah. now. You, you, you call Rey Mysterio matches against people the size of Great Khali. Come on now. You, yeah. like, and you not, not once said anything about their weight. It, it's stuff like that. I'm like, bro, just polish that. And it might come down to yeah. they may they may need to. I, I know a lot of people are not going to agree with this. They may need to script the men. I mean the commentary, the commentary, like yeah. not not fully scripted to, from top to bottom, but like to say, hey, don't say this. Focus on this. Focus on this match. Make the people care. Make the crowd care. Because if you don't, why would they care? Yeah, exactly. It, it is you, something they can work on, though. That is one positive of AEW. They can work on it. All right, so now we're going to get to the <laughs> speed round. It, it, I, I have to wrap it up from there because I'm like, you just literally said everything I, I, yeah, I was going to say. But l- let's get to the speed round Q&A. And I got something. This I did this with Brendan last time, and I'm going to do it with you mm-hmm. as well. Okay. List your five favorite black wrestlers, past and present, not exclusive to WWE. Ooh, okay. Uh, Keith Lee, uh, the new, can the New Day count as one? Yeah. The new, yeah. Uh, the new day. Ooh, who else? Who else? The Rock counts. Does the Rock. Yeah. Count? Yeah. He half. Yeah. He half black. Um, <laughs> who else are we thinking? Uh, who else? Oh, Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's a killer. Um, who else? Who should be the last one? Got to think careful about this. Uh, there's someone obvious I'm missing. I don't want to say Shot on Benjamin as the last pick. There's someone else I'm missing. <laughs> who am I? Who am I missing? My memory is not good enough for this. Oh god, I feel really bad now. Someone's gonna get at me on Twitter. I'm forgetting someone. Just scrolling through my Spotify. Who am I forgetting? There is someone else I love. Okay, I don't care. Okay. It, it it don't have to be it don't have to be it don't have to be male. It don't have to be all male. Yeah. Be female uh, too. Oh, Sasha Banks. There you Sasha go. <laughs> they, I'm like, you don't it don't, it don't have to be all hey, male. Well, like. <laughs> Naomi. No, I love Naomi. Yeah, sorry, obviously. Okay, now I'm remembering all these names. Yeah, okay. I, I'd say any formation of what I just... Booker T as well, Mark Henry. Yeah, okay. Sorry, my memory is not good. <laughs> Go on, continue. If you had the opportunity to change the outcome of a match, what match would it be and why? It doesn't have to be exclusive to WWE. Mm. Any match you've seen in the uh, past that you feel like, hey, this outcome could have been better if they did this. So a couple of days ago at Money in the Bank Theory won Money in the Bank. On recent memory, I would have to say that because Seth Rollins should have won that match. Too soon? Perhaps. Yeah, and th- this man out here talking about A-Town down like it, like, like a, we haven't said A-Town down since Obama we- got elected it the first time. Mm. And that was 2008. Yeah. It's 2022. Yeah. Come on, man. It must suck. To have this guy come from where you guys come from, right? Like he's, he's from McDonough. He, he's not. He's not. Uh, he's not from Atlanta. He's from McDonough. That is literally oh, okay. a small. That's a suburb, like at the border of Marietta, like a whole part of another city. It's not Atlanta. Uh, okay. They just they WWE has this thing of they like to generalize Atlanta. The only person we claim from Atlanta is Cody Rhodes. Mm, I respect <laughs> that. He's great. <laughs> But that's the only uh, if, if, if and I agree with you on that outcome because oh boy we, we, yeah huh, yeah anyway we're not gonna punt on that yeah. anymore because uh that thing made me mad <laughs> um list content creator I'm a I'm gonna list the name of content creators and in in short tell me your thoughts of these creators Brandon does everything game changer 
Chris Dinker, aka Dink Ops, aka Chris Danger. So many AKAs. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, pioneer, pioneer, lay the groundwork for all of us. Chris Smooth, the greatest of all time. Love him. Muscle Man Malcolm. <laughs> Uh, so much potential that it hurts. He's going to be one of the all-time great interviewers one day. Logan Paul. Underappreciated in the current day. I really do like Logan. KSI. Without him, I arguably wouldn't even be here. He's phenomenal. He's the best. Changed Simply the better AM. Oh, sorry. You changed the game for the UK? Elaborate <laughs> on that a little bit. Elaborate on a little bit. Yeah. As simply put, I mean, without KSI and without the Iben that followed, like the UK YouTube scene would not be what it is right now. Like he, from doing those Q&A Sunday skits, like from the FIFA videos, like he proved that you, if you're a gaming YouTuber, you don't have to just be gaming. Like you can move up and you can do all these things and you can break into the mainstream and like from the, and like the boxing, like he's, on so many levels, he's just he's changed the game. It's mad. But um, yeah, sorry, go. Simply better AM. Simply better than the rest. <laughs> Stacks Montana. <laughs> I want I want to meet him one day, and I want to collab with. Him. I I think he's great. He's he, yeah, he's great. I'm gonna collab. I'm gonna put all these in, these guys in the same boat. Uh, Deadlock, that being Pulse, John Blood. And Tony Pizza guy. <clears throat> Fantastic. And last but certainly not least, Phoenix Nitro. Jabroni, loser, despise him. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Okay, we're, we're gonna break the air with this whole Phoenix thing. I'll 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 stop <clears throat> being in K3 for a second. Without that man, I arguably wouldn't be here. He has taught me a lot and he is you know, outside of the whole uh, the GM versus GM thing and all that, he's he's a good guy. I'll give him that. But that's the last compliment I'm going to give him. He's a bastard. <laughs> hey, man. And that is all we have for you today. I appreciate you for chilling with your boy. You know we're really going to collab at some point mm -hmm. because... Hey man, yeah, that's all we can do, man. We, this content grind, like I, I know, I've been a little lacking on the on the uploads on the two K side, is because I said it on the podcast last week. WWE two K twenty two is fun to bullshit around, like if you just bullshit around. But like when you're creating content and detailed content, like I used to or still kind of do, it is a headache. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, for no reason. So, Which but is, all you can do is adapt. I'd and... recommend going back to two K nineteen. By the way, <laughs> oh, I'm already ahead of you, brother. I ain't even. I didn't even delete the game. Like I wasn't. I wasn't dumb yeah, to delete same. the game. I just. I just put the. I just put two K twenty two on a different hard drive. So like, if I'm if I, I so I can have both of them at the same time. Like I'm. Not, hey man, we here. We here. But uh, I appreciate you for yeah. stopping by stopping by the table. Uh, where can those of you who are not listen, who are not watching on YouTube or Twitch or wherever we're um, streaming this, for those in audio form, where can they follow you on social media? So you can follow me at Deontay DDJ on pretty much everything on Twitter, Instagram, on TikTok. It's at Real Deontay DDJ. YouTube Deontay DDJ. Uh, on Twitter, I go by many personas because uh, you know, like. My brother's on there sometimes, Dante DDJ. There's multiple people running that Twitter account these days. It's it's a whole thing. It sends Gresh a little insane because he doesn't believe that there's multiple people on the Twitter account, but there is. I swear there is. You about to turn me into Kevin Owens now. Come on now. You and these personas. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I appreciate you for stopping by again. And if, for those of you who are not, uh, make sure you check this guy out. And we will see you guys next time. That was a fun conversation with Deontay DDJ, YouTube extraordinaire. He needs to be at 100,000 subscribers at some point because this man is too talented to be to go unnoticed. He is highly talented. I recommend you guys check him out. If you are, haven't already, make sure you follow us on social media at Gresh Unleashed as well as solo.to slash Gresh so that way you can be kept up to date with everything that goes on with this podcast and everything Gresh. If you want to be, keep up to me personally, all you have to do is follow me at Josh Gresham ORG. That is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook is Joshua Gresham ORG.
with that being said you guys stay safe out here in the in the world of unknown but as your purveyor of mischief i have to remind you of one known and that is you are appreciated especially by me and remember to always eat sleep flex and repeat be safe we out be breezy